Our Father in heaven, I thank you for your word. I thank you for how your Holy Spirit speaks through your word um, of issues that we may hold near and dear to our heart. We may even have them in a blind spot in our lives and we don't realize um, we don't realize the issue and the problem that they are and yet your spirit brings these things to our attention and so god i thank you for this um, be, be our teacher today we need we need to hear from you and we thank you collectively, God, for all that you have done and how you have been teaching us through uh, this first book of the New Testament. We ask God today that you would anoint, anoint this time with your spirit. May he be our teacher. And in this, we give praise and glory to your son, Jesus. It's in his name that we pray these things. Amen. Retaliation. I uh, did a little bit of uh, uh, looking and reading about some um, situations in history uh, of retaliation. Um, if you think, uh, probably some of you can think of movies that you've seen where something happens to an individual and they end up uh, retaliating against the bad guys and, and bringing justice, uh, probably not in the way that it should be brought, but it makes for uh, a good movie. Um, or, it makes for a movie. Maybe it's not a good movie, but it makes for a movie nonetheless. Uh, one of the stories I heard was a gentleman from Colorado. This was not that many years ago. A gentleman from Colorado had property that apparently was the subject of a zoning sale repositioning within the community, within the town. And somehow a um, a concrete company had bought the property, which made it uh, nearly impossible or impossible for this man to use his property the way he had previously been doing. And his request for help uh, from City Hall and from the police to stop this from happening uh, fell on deaf ears. The individual, the man, was a welder, and during the course of time, he bought a bulldozer and began to weld onto this bulldozer and repurpose it into a tank. He put it together and had cameras all the way around, so from his uh, cockpit, if you will, he could monitor where people were all the way around him, and he was able to see where they were coming from. He also had it mounted with guns, um, that he would be able to uh, fire at individuals that were in his way. And when the time came, he sealed himself inside and began driving around the town. Driving around the town, he uh, went to the concrete company that was the focal point, or at least one of the focal points of his uh, revenge and his anger, and he demolished this thing. He also went to the police station and demolished it. Um, one guy had a uh, road grader that he pulled up and tried to block this guy off from going any further into town. And when the guy saw it, he turned his tank around and started after the uh, road grader. And the road grader guy was like, well, this was a dumb idea. And he turned around and bolted in the, there's a video of, of this, uh, a uh, bulldozer tank just picking this thing up and kind of flinging it around at will. He went to City Hall and demolished it. He went to the mayor's home and demolished it. Um, when it was all said and done, he took his own life. The damage was over $7 million in this town. When we think of retaliation and trying to get back at those people who have done us wrong, who have said something or acted in a way against us that we feel is incorrect uh, and we decide to take it into our own hands, um, that's, a, that's a dangerous place to be. 
And so as Jesus is talking here in this passage, we begin with familiar words uh, of Matthew chapter 5, verse 38, where Jesus says, You have heard that it was said. And remember what we said last week, that when you hear something again and again and again, it gets embedded and imprinted uh, in your heart and in your life, and you begin to live this way. You have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. There is, there is within the law, the, the, the Mosaic law, there is the opportunity to bring about justice through, um, uh, through retribution, to right a wrong that has been done to an individual. And, and we call this the law of retribution. Um, it's also called lex talionis. Lex talionis. And lex talionis is the law of retaliation, whereby a punishment resembles the offense committed in kind and degree. It was instituted to curb evil because of the hardness of men's hearts, so the expositor's Bible commentary says. It was designed specifically to take vengeance out of the individual's hand. It was to take vengeance out of the individual hand. It doesn't mean that wrongs weren't righted. It just took it out of my hand coming against you because you have wronged me. If we think about that for a minute, that makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because if you've wronged me, say, slapped me as the passage is going to say. I, I may have my feelings hurt. I may even sting for a little bit. And my response probably won't be in kind. Can I get an amen on that? We're, we're, we're way more likely to say, you pushed me, I'm going to knock you on the ground. We, it goes like this, and all of a sudden, it escalates into fisticuff. And what happens is so often we end up taking things into our own hand and we don't do it in a manner of justice. We do it in a manner of retaliation, a manner of revenge, and it never, it never is a good thing. We read about this law of retribution or the lex talionis in a couple different passages. Um, Exodus chapter 21 verse 22 through 25, in Leviticus 24, verse 19 through 20, and Deuteronomy 19, 21. I'm going to read the first one because it was a little bit lengthy and I didn't want to use a bunch of extra slides. Just listen to Exodus 21, the Leviticus and Deuteronomy, and I have slides on those. If, a man, if men fight and hurt a woman with child so that she gives birth prematurely, Yet no harm follows. So she gave birth prematurely, but there, there was no harm. Um, no harm that was done. He shall surely be punished accordingly as the woman's husband imposes on him, and he shall pay as the judgment determines. But if any harm follows, then you shall give life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot, burn for burn, wound for wound, stripe for stripe. If, if, if two men are fighting and a woman who is, is pregnant gets hurt in the process and she delivers her baby early, there's a chance to be able to say, okay, what happened? Is there anything wrong with the baby? Is there anything wrong with the child? If not, there still is a penalty because it shouldn't have happened. And the husband of the wife gets to say, this is what I want done. He doesn't execute that, but he determines what that is. But if there's damage, then the magistrates, the legal authorities, bring about the eye for an eye, the tooth for a tooth, the burn for a burn, wound for wound, etc. Leviticus chapter 24, verse 19 through 20 says, if a man causes disfigurement, that's, this is important, if a man causes disfigurement of his neighbor as he has done, so shall it be done to him. Fracture for fracture, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, as he has caused disfigurement of a man, so shall it be done to him. It's an important part in this first two lines. If a man causes disfigurement to a neighbor, to his neighbor, 
It's not a matter of a slight or he, he hurt my feelings. It's a matter of there's been some disfigurement. Now there's some evidence beyond just words being tossed around. Now there's something that physically you can see, and that's when the standard is applied. Deuteronomy chapter 19, verse 21 in the New Living Translation says, And you must show no pity for the guilty. Your rule should be life for life, eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, foot for foot. They needed to set up some systems. They needed to have a system in place so that it would not be a free-for-all. They wanted to be a civilized society. And in order to do that, there were standards and guidelines. If you hurt someone else, there was going to be consequences brought back against you in the process. But by the time Jesus uh, was on the earth and he was, he was uh, alive and walking on the earth, uh, cases like this did not go to the place of if somebody's eye came out, you gouged out the other person's eye. Instead, it had changed over more like our, like our legal system where if, if you lose an eye, you say, what's the value of that man's eye? And it would be a financial monetary payment from the person who caused the damage to the one who had received the damage. In fact, one, one commentary said, there is not a single instance of the practice of retaliation that is mentioned in the sources of, of saying, you know, you gouge out my eye, I'm get, we're going to gouge your eye out too. There, there's not one because they had shifted over to it being that's worth X number of dollars or denarii and, and that's what you're going to be able to pay us. The New Testament and Rabbinic Judaism book that I have, which is a, a great resource with this particular uh, study in the, the Sermon on the Mount, they said that this may have been, Jesus is teaching on this, may have been a revival of sorts due to the Sadducees' theory and their application that the Bible should be interpreted quite literally. Whereas the Pharisees would tend to say, well, we can have some wiggle room on this. The Sadducees said, no, it says an eye for an eye, and that is exactly what we're going to do. And so some feel that the reason that Jesus was teaching on this and, and addressing it was because the teaching of the Sadducees was beginning to stir in the hearts of the people. Listen, if I've been wrong, remember the law says an eye for an eye, and I'm going to go after that person. I'm going to make things right. The application of this kind of blindsided me. I didn't see it coming like this, but look at the antithesis of Jesus in verse 39. He says, But I tell you not to resist an evil person, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek, turn the other to him also. I would just point out to you, if you happen to see uh, the 2022 Oscars last Sunday night, I did not. I was watching McClintock instead which was a much better fight to see than the one at the Oscars. But um, this is, as you know, this is where we're at in our study. We're talking about retaliation. We're talking about whoever slaps you on the right cheek. So this is not to uh, go after any of the incidences from the Oscars last Sunday night. And, and, I, and I would also say, let us be careful as we're listening to this and as we're studying this, not to apply this to that situation. But instead, let us look into the mirror and be reflective of how does this passage apply to you and me. Jesus says, I tell you not to resist an evil person. Don't, don't resist him. Don't take a stand against an evil person. Don't oppose them. Don't, don't, um, yeah, don't, don't stand up to somebody who is evil, who is coming against you. There, is, there are times when we are told to resist, but this isn't one of them. In fact, James chapter 4, verse 7 talks about resisting. Read this together with me. James 4, verse 7. Submit yourselves, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, so we are to resist the devil, um, but here Jesus is saying, do not resist an evil an evil person. First Peter chimes in on this also. First Peter chapter 5 verses 8 through 9 says, read this to get with me as well. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, 
walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. Resist him. Resist him. Steadfast in the faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brotherhood in the world. Resist him steadfast in the faith. It's not that I'm going to go take Taekwondo lessons and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to beat Satan. That's what I'm going to do. No, it is to grow strong in your faith and resist him and be steadfast in your faith. In your faith. Jesus, though, he says, I tell you not to resist an evil person, an evil, a wicked, a malicious person. The word here is active. It's not the person who is sitting over here who is evil. I'm sitting over here and they haven't done anything to me. They're over there. I'm not going after that person and stirring up a fight and trying to churn something up. No, this is an active person. Not only are they evil, not only are they wicked and they are malicious, they are malicious and they are acting out on that. It is evil personified. It's an individual who is not just evil. They are living that out and you are the target of their evil. He says, I, I tell you not to resist an evil person. Some people say that this is a passage that, you know, Jesus is saying you need to sit back and allow somebody to beat the daylights out of you and just let them do it and it's no big deal. I, I don't think that that's what he's saying here. I don't think that's what he's saying. He says to them instead, he says, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek. All of us, all of us have watched TV shows. Jay and I were starting to watch, trying to watch a, a Robin Hood uh, some Robin Hood stuff yesterday. We ended up watching Old Batman and Rob, and that was as close as we got. But we all know we've seen we've seen the individual who there there are two people that are talking and they're they're interacting with each other, and they've decided it's time we settle this. And what do they do? The one takes off his glove and he goes up to the other one. And he goes Psh! and slaps him on the face, and he says, "I challenge you to a duel." In Kentucky, there were two oak trees north of Lexington. They were certain distance apart, not very far. It was called, they were called the dueling oaks. So named because if you had a duel, that's where you went to carry it out. Can't even imagine such a thing. You can imagine the old west, you know, you know, this town ain't big enough for the two of us. And they go outside and they step it off 10 paces each way. And you draw first. No, you draw first. And then finally, somebody ends up shooting the other person. The slap in the face was not, it, I think the NIV says strike, more of like a strike with a blow. It's not that. It's more of with a glove or to slap somebody, to backhand somebody. It's not to cause damage as much as it is to insult them, to shame them, to humiliate them. There's a huge difference between being psh, you shut your mouth and stop talking like that. That's one thing. And somebody hauling right off and slugging you. You know, get your, it gets your attention. Jesus is saying here, he says, but whoever slaps you on your right cheek. In the Middle East, I remember when we were learning customs and cultures, there were certain things that you just didn't do. And, and there were certain things that in the United States meant one thing, but over in the Middle East, they meant something completely different. To strike somebody over in the Middle East, the culture was that it would provoke a challenge. It would provoke a fight or embarrass them. If you slap somebody, even just a little, just a little bit, game on. Because you had shamed them, you had humiliated them, you had hurt their pride. Um, striking, striking somebody is a little issue. And what Jesus, one writer said this, and I think this is key, what Jesus was telling them was that when it came to small, trivial matters, small, trivial matters, where somebody has, has cursed your name in public, when somebody has, has spoken ill of you that was not kind and not true, when, when somebody had, has, you're driving down the road and somebody has cut you off. Maybe you were in their blind spot and maybe they just were being mean. But no damage was done. Well, they could have, no damage was done. 
but, but, but they were in my, no damage was done. A small, trivial matter. Yes, it could have been worse, but really and truly, there's nothing more than that your ego has been hurt. Your pride has been tweaked just a bit. And what had happened was the Jewish people had come to the place that they were saying in matters of where the law says if somebody uh, causes another to lose their eye, then eye for eye, tooth for tooth, hand for hand, life for life. They were taking that where there is real damage. There is real fleshly damage. There's a hand that's been missing. There is an eye that's no longer there. They were taking that principle and they were applying it over here when somebody would say something about them and slight them, and they would say, I've got the law, and I am justified, and it is an eye for an eye, and what happens all of a sudden? Well, if you said that about me, I'm going to say that about you, you, and all of a sudden it escalates again. Does that make sense? Jesus is saying, you know what? Whenever someone slaps you, when they slap you on the right cheek. When, when you have that opportunity and you say, you know what, the, the, the law of, of restitution, the law of retaliation, the law and the, and the, the, the lex tali, uh, talionis, the lex talionis, I have my rights. I've got my rights. You can't do that and get away with it, Jesus says to them. I want you to turn the other cheek. I want you to turn the other cheek. Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 35, God says, vengeance is mine and recompense. Their foot shall slip in due time for the day of their calamity is at hand and the things to come hasten upon them. They're coming quickly. Or Romans chapter 12, verse 19, on the heels of on the heels of Paul saying, live peaceably with all men, Paul says this. Read this together with me. Romans chapter 12, verse 19. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. The New Living Translation has this phrase where it says, but rather give place to wrath. It, wrath. it has something along the lines of, leave that to the righteous anger of God. When you, when you have been, when your pride has been hurt, let God deal with that. Don't try to go and fix that. I have both been the, the initiators and I've been the recipient of, of, of times when I have felt wronged and I went and I'm going to write this. And I've been on the other end where somebody else felt wronged and they came after me and they were going to write it. It never ended as nicely as it could. And Jesus is saying, listen, when there is a slight, when there is an offense, when there's, not, there's not any damage. Yes, you got your feelings hurt. And in a society where we live today where it seems like Everything that we say and anything that is done can hurt somebody's feelings. Jesus is saying, y'all need to turn the other cheek. You, you need to just let it roll off your back. I, not only is he saying that vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord, but an example that we have in Scripture of this is Jesus himself. Our example is Jesus, a messianic passage from Isaiah chapter 50, verses 6 and 7. Here is where, again, we're going to be taking communion a little bit, and we're looking ahead at uh, uh, Holy Week and Good Friday and the resurrection. Hear, hear this passage from Isaiah chapter 50, verse 6 and 7, and hear it as Jesus would be speaking because I believe it's messianic. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who plucked out my beard. I did not hide my face from shame and spitting for the Lord God will help me. Therefore, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a flint and I know that I will not be ashamed. 
when we recognize and we realize what Christ did for us on the cross, when we realize that, okay, my pride has been hurt, my feelings have been hurt, I don't want, I don't want to have to go through that again. I think of what Christ took on the cross for me. My sin, my shame, my hurt, and my injury. He took He took that on the cross. What a testimony it can be when somebody speaks ill of us and we don't try to <clears throat> gonna get them back and I'm gonna set and I'm gonna we we let it stop. Proverbs says for lack of a fire or lack for lack of wood a fire goes out. Lack of gossip, lack of, you know, well, you said this, and I said this, and you said this, and if you, if you just take you out, you out of the equation, it tends to drift away and end and cease. Allow the rest of these verses to just speak to you as Christ continues to teach in verse 40, and he says, if anyone wants to sue you and take away your tunic, Let them have your cloak also. The tunic was worn close to the garment. It'd be like our T-shirt and underwear, if you will. If if anyone wants to sue you and take take that away from you, give give them your outer garment. Give them your cloak also. Here you go. You take this as well. And whoever compels you to go one mile, go with him too. As I was reading this, I couldn't help but think of Uh, Simon of Cyrene, who was pulled out of the crowd to help Jesus carry his cross, carry our cross, to Calvary. Verse 42, Give to him who who asks you, and from him who wants to borrow from you, do not turn away. Jesus is saying, you know, here's, here's situations where there's not a lot of damage to you that's been done. Yes, there's, there, maybe there's some damage a little bit, but you haven't lost an arm and you haven't lost an eye. Your pride has been, been tweaked and dashed more than anything else. In this case here, don't render evil for evil. Don't, don't go after the evil acts and try to bring about uh, you justifying it and you fixing it. Yes, there's a magistrate out there. There's a court out there that can deal with that. But when the moment is going on, you and I need to turn and learn to turn our head and turn the other cheek. I don't think it can happen by ourselves. I didn't turn my other cheek in high school. And, and there are some here who you're sitting here, and, and I, I can see the look on your face because I see it in the mirror when I was studying this. I, I'm running out of cheeks to turn. Amen? It seems like every time I turn around, there's another, and it's like, I, I, I can only turn so many times. God, give me the grace to yet again turn another cheek. I love the words of Ezekiel chapter 36. Verse 26, read this together with me as we conclude. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Bow with me in prayer. God, we are so wired. (laughs) I am so wired to want to fix every wrong that has been brought against me. And and I can list them. God, put in my, put in me a new heart. Take out the heart of stone and replace it with a heart of flesh realizing that every wrong that's ever been done to me was nailed to the cross. God, I, I, I struggle with this one because I get tired. We, we get tired of having people say and do things and it seems like 
there's no justice. The problems continue. God, we pray that you would bring about justice in our world. And at the same time, God, we realize that some of that justice is brought against us. So we ask that you would be honest and true and merciful and loving. And you would give us that heart of flesh. And you would give us the strength to turn the other cheek. Seventy times seven. To not be tender, not be overly sensitive that every time somebody looks at us the wrong way, we get our nose out of joint. God, help us to turn the other cheek. It's in your name we pray these things. Amen.